do you just find it so frustrating that people who have ADHD just have the most difficult time in school while most other people do just fine? Why is it that people with ADHD struggle so much in school? Well, we're going to talk about that today in this video. Hey, welcome everybody to Optimal Mind Performance. I am Dr. Legrand, and on this channel, we talk about ways to be able to improve your mind, to be able to have optimal mind performance, peak performance in helping enhance with behavior, attention, focus, whatever, also anxiety and depression. We do focus a lot that on this channel. So if you are new here and want to actually enhance your mind, improve upon that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, Give us a like if you like the video, as well as hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other future videos. So since this is the very first video that we're doing on this channel, I just want to introduce myself. Like I said, I'm Dr. Legrand. I grew up with dyslexia, ADHD, and lots of different challenges in school. Going through college, going through high school, everything as far as even medical school, it was very difficult for me to get through school. And it was always a challenge for me. And I wanted to know why. Why do I struggle compared to other people? Why is this so difficult? I spent most of my life trying to figure this out, trying to find ways and techniques to be able to help improve that. And along the way, I did. I found ways and I found understanding why, how the brain works. And this is what I want to use for this channel is to help kids and also adults who struggle with attention, anxiety, depression that also do hinder a lot of people with ADHD. So this is what I want to use and kind of discuss with you guys today. So like I said in this video, I'm going to answer the question of why it's so difficult for us people with ADHD to actually do well in school. So you have to first kind of go back first on what is the whole school, public school system? How was it set up? Well, if you look actually at back in the history, and this is something I study a lot even way back when I was in high school and in college to understand this concept, is why was it set up? Especially here in the U.S., when the public school system was first set up, well, usually the rich people wanted, you know, factory workers. They wanted people to be able to actually work in their factories. In order for that to happen, the things that they wanted to those people to understand was more logical stuff, because to you know build things you know in a conveyor belt system to be able to understand simple concepts in a more logical sense to be able to produce a lot of product. The other thing was important was linguistics, of course, understanding you know, how to speak well, write well, those things to be able to communicate. It was very business oriented, and still today it still looks like that a lot. Uh, you know, it's changed a little bit here and there, but for the most part. The school system is really set up more in a logical and linguistic way. You know, it's a very important skill set to have, but since it's so structured that way, in a sense, kids with ADHD tend to really struggle. Why? Because they tend to have more of a creative mindset and trying to force them to think more logical and linguistic is going to be a huge challenge. And I just find that to even be a struggle that I had throughout was trying to learn that way. So the next point I want to emphasize is that people with ADHD, like I said, tend to think more creatively or have more hands-on experience, more physical aspect, or maybe more music learned that way. They have that need that creative way of actually learning, and we don't get that enough in the public school system or even in, in our colleges as well. Those are all set up more logical. You gotta sit in a row, listen to the teacher, Listening is going to be, of course, lectures, and that's more linguistic learning or, you know, looking at diagrams or, you know, trying to do mathematical equations, more logical sense. And that's why, you know, doing things more hands on is not used as much in school. You know, they do use it, but not enough for people with ADHD to be able to learn those difficult concepts because that's what I struggled with and I had to start using that on my own outside of school trying to get creative ways of learning and I will discuss about that in my next video so if you're like I said you should subscribe because I'm going to be producing every week we're going to have videos on specific things to help improve your mind improve performance and I'm going to talk about techniques that I learned over the years that have helped me to even get through a medical school. So like I said before, ADHD people need more hands-on experiences in school and the schools do not provide that enough for us. And why that is so important is because the way that we actually learn 
You know, they say that, you know, things that are said, we learn about 30 percent. Things that are written and said, we learn about, you know, about roughly 40 percent. But if we do what we say, see, hear, and sight, all those kind of things, using all our kinesthetics, all our senses, all once, we tend to retain more. And specifically for people with ADHD, they need all different aspects to be able to use to learn. And in school, we just don't get that enough. The other biggest challenge in school is there's way too many distractions. It's like, hey, what? What? You know, because someone sneezed. Oh, or somebody's talking, chatting over there. I know I, this is a big issue for me, especially during time test. Oh my gosh, that was the worst. Be able to try to sit there and focus when even just the minor little distractions, whether it was from a student, a teacher, somebody outside, I just couldn't really focus. Or even a lecture. Lecture, sometimes there's just too many distractions of being interacted with different people, being with a bunch of different other students, can be a huge challenge with kids or adults with ADHD. The next point I want to emphasize of why kids with ADHD or adults with ADHD tend to have a difficult time in college or in the public school system is they don't have a creative outlet. Having a creative outlet is so important because really, like I said before, ADHD people tend to be a little bit more creative. I'm not saying they all do, but a good majority from the experience I have worked with a lot of kids with ADHD and myself included need that creative outlet. And those creative outlets could be from drawing, be able to create something or music, something that can actually give you a break and Being in six hours in school or if you're in college, if you're taking night classes as well, could be eight hours plus in school or medical school. That's how it is. Uh, Not having breaks where you have some creative outlet makes a hindrance of actually retaining and learning. And how you do this is sometimes you need to implement it actually in practice as you're taking notes, doodling creating, drawing. I do a lot of mind mapping and we'll again talk more about these types of techniques in future videos. But those are just things that ADHD people need to do is actually have more of a creative outlet if they want to perform better in school. The last thing I want to point out of why kids with ADHD struggle in school is most subjects are just boring. Uh, For me, uh, most subjects I found were really just not Uh, you know, really had my interest at all because frankly, a lot of the things such as like math, I mean, I was good at math for the most part until we hit calculus, but I didn't understand the concept of why I needed to learn it. Uh, Other things such as like history was a little boring at the time because I didn't find any interest as a kid. I do find interest now and day, Uh, but other things uh, such as like English, oh, I hated English. Just talking about just the grammar, uh, you know, just uh, all the rules. It just, to me, just found so boring to be able to do something like that. And this is what your ADHD kids deal with or adults. If your parents and have, uh, you know, kids are struggling with ADHD, they have a hard time. And you probably already know this, uh, having any interest in these subjects. So what do you do about this? You have to find a motive, For me, you know, the motivation for me of why getting through a lot of the subjects is that I knew I had a passion for actually becoming a doctor. You know, I found that passion. Now, that's probably most, not most cases for people with ADHD. It might be that they have a passion in sports and trying to find a motive behind that of why they want to learn history. Have them start learning history of people in sports. You know, that can be a motive. But actually even asking the teacher itself why they are so interested in the subject, what makes them drive to love the subject so much, and that can maybe help them find that also drive an interest. Because if you don't establish that, for especially with kids with ADHD, I'm sorry, it's just going to be really difficult to be able to get through the subject and actually learn and continue and do perform well in school. You have to find that motivation. Because once you find that motivation, kids with ADHD tend to have a very good focus as far as attention when they're interested in something. You know, I don't like the aspect that ADHD, uh, you know, they call it attention deficit. I wouldn't say kids with ADHD have attention deficit, even though, yeah, they can get distracted with lots of different subjects, lots of different things that are on their mind. But once there's something that's actually really interesting for them and they want to narrow their focus, then they will and they'll perform very well. You just have to be able to unlock that. 
And that is one way you can do that is trying to ask the teachers what drives them and are motivated that they might be able to find interest or finding what your interests are already are right now. The example like I gave, like if you're interested in sports, trying to study history of sports and then maybe like might like history more or, you know, maybe when it comes to physics, understanding the physics behind sports, those things can really drive you to be able to actually take the boring subjects and make them more interesting so that you'll perform better in them. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I am super excited about this new channel, Optimal Mind Performance. Like I said, we're gonna be posting videos every week on how you can improve your mind, peak performance, and help with attention, focus, anxiety, depression, all those kind of things that can help with that. So if you're new to this channel, uh, next week we're actually gonna be talking about what techniques I use to help improve in school, with especially with kids with ADHD. So make sure to hit that subscribe button right here. And also, I will see you guys next time, next week, and see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.